distinguished taxpayers, good afternoon. Your Excellency, before I say one or two things and then invite you to talk to these great people, let me introduce the cabinet colleagues who are here, starting with the Honorable Musali Amdavadi, the Prime Cabinet Secretary, Pigiani Makofi. We have uh, Simon Chalugui, the CS for Cooperatives and SMC. The Honorable Salim Mvuria, our CS for Mining and Blue Economy. Mr. Davis Churchill, our, mil our CS for Energy and Petroleum. The Honorable Senator Kipchumba Mukomen for Roads and Transport. And our PS for Transport, Mohamed Dagar. Who is there? Oh, the Honorable Aden Dwale, the Minister for Defense. Uh, Your Excellency, I have only two things to say. One is to assure the taxpayers here as present, and indeed the Kenyan nation, that those of us in the executive who work under the President have very clear and unequivocal instructions from the President that all taxes, all funds collected from taxpayers and given to us through appropriation by the National Assembly must be used prudently and for the purpose for which they have been raised. And the President is clear that his government will not entertain leakages, cleavage, misappropriation, corruption and irresponsible spending of taxpayers' money. As earlier as this morning in his opening remarks, as he was chairing cabinet, once more he has reminded his members of the executive that funds must be used prudently for the purposes for which they have been collected. Indeed, his call that Mambo ni Matatu revolves around taxpayers' money. It is around that space. Number two, I also want to assure the taxpayers present here and the rest of the country and the people of Kenya that there has been a debate about visits by the president out of the country where some critics for being ignorant and not having proper facts, things and advises an argument that funds are not being used prudently. I want to assure the taxpayers and the people of Kenya that every journey that has been planned for the president outside the country is carefully planned and has an economic gain to the people of Kenya. And the president travels because there is a gap. We are not able to meet our development and current expenditure from what we collect from the taxpayers. And therefore the President must travel to look for investors, to engage multilateral institutions, to bridge the deficit. And I want to assure the people of Kenya as we see today, these high profile visits by the